So, Robert Evans here again. Back in downtown. Down, 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 down. The people from a distance here. Uh, people are kind of out for so, a while. Oh, let me say, people. We encourage anyone that so, wishes to demonstrate peacefully and move away from the area now because of the criminal behavior of a few. So, here's what's happening. We had a crowd, maybe 200 people, marched from Peninsula Park up here. When they arrived, no one was present at the Portland Police Union building. Um, and some folks uh, set up outside of the Portland Police Union building and uh, began debating about what to do. Um, and there were some people who wanted to get in, and there were some folks who did not want uh, folks to do that. Uh, most notably, a man in a blue shirt who refused to wear a mask and a woman draped in an American flag. Um, so the two of them, you know, attempted to stop people from getting in. And, and to be honest, the crowds efforts to get in weren't super organized. There were some people who tried to fry at the doors, a couple of fires set, but really um, not a huge um, effort. Uh, and then an argument started with some folks who lived in the neighborhood and weren't happy with that, and a couple of activists, and it was just this whole thing went on for longer than I expected, about a half hour. Um, people. Um, so that's my guess for what's about to happen next. And we're kind of in that awkward period where everyone got the, um, got the reaction that was kind of, you know, expected, which is the police showing up to mess everybody up for them trying to damage the union building. Um, but the police aren't here yet. I guess we'll see what happens next. It's interesting to me, number one, that there were a number of folks in the crowd who, you know, th that there were no police present at the union building when everybody showed up, first of all. That's a little bit weird. Um, the second thing that's interesting is that once the crowd showed up, they had a long time here to, like, decide what they were going to do. Uh, March with the crowd. There appeared to be, like, kind of yelling at anyone who tried to take direct action against the union building. And then when the police showed up, they were a lot nicer than they ever are on the LRAD, especially at the Union Building, and were like, we know that most of you are here to be peaceful, and we just don't want to have to hurt people because of the actions of a few, so please don't break into the building. Uh, and, so, that's interesting to me. On the whole, kind of a compelling time. This is kind of a random story that the fires and folks are trying to stop. So that's kind of the situation so far. And as I walk through the crowd, I'm not going to film this, but there's folks in block who are, you know, limbering up and stretching and getting ready. Somebody's in the middle of the burning dumpster, which is an interesting call. Um, I guess trying to keep it going again. They don't have a whole lot of fuel in the burning dumpster. So the burning dumpster this time was mostly filled with a fairly small amount of wood, which is unfortunate because when that's the case, uh, not wood, I'm sorry, paper products. Mostly cardboard. And when that's the case, you don't really get a great dumpster fire. It burns out pretty quick. It doesn't burn all that hot. It's not going to melt or anything. Um, and it doesn't really obstruct people. So that is a little bit the situation we have with that dumpster fire. That's on one side of this. So you kind of have this crowd of, again, maybe about 200 people uh, in front of the Portland Police Union building. And you've got a flaming dumpster. On one side of them, near the Heavenly Donuts, uh, by her kind of a block of apartment. And then on the other side of things is an intersection, uh, Denver and um, right at the other street. Um, there's a Chevron, too. And, uh, oh, yeah. So here's this. Here we can see the kind of argument that's been happening all night. This is a version of it. Um, these are, this is this lady in the American flag has been trying to tell people from doing shit. Um, People have been rather frustrated at her. Um, and, you know, she, uh, she and Laura, another guy poured beer on people who was doing this. Like, it's been a whole, it's been a whole rigmarole. And so far, nobody's, like, done anything serious. There's just been some yelling. 
Now we're seeing a little bit of slapping. People are angry. Um, it's pretty not not great. It's not great. So that's happening. <laughs> Kind of a, it's a prominent local indigenous activist, and this lady in the American flag is also claiming to be indigenous as soon as the other people made a point that they were indigenous activists and, you know, with all these uh, influential and they're angry at the police. Yeah. Uh, weird hat. Weird hat. So, people are yelling at her for not wearing a mask. Yelling at certain members of the crowd. Now, this is interesting because the owner just said folks were attempting, appeared to be attempting to break into the uh, Portland Police Association building. Now, we were just up at the Portland Police Association building, but at that point, there were just a couple of folks yelling and arguing at each other. So, that is the situation as of, you know, you all saw it, uh, like a minute ago. People were not really breaking in, but the LRAD, um, you know, this is what was going to happen. They'll be here soon. Like this sort of a shield. We got a tear gas hoodie. He does have his good pop and his bad pop voice. Um, his bad pop voice is very excited, yeah. and his good pop voice is trying to be a little bit deeper and a little bit calmer. His good pop voice lets us know that he really does a taking in his potential. But, but not here. But not here. Somewhere else. Somewhere else. Somewhere else. No, no serious attempt. There was a fire lit. It was put out in like, like 20 seconds. Um, again, people, it took people 10, 15 minutes to even really start fucking with the building. I think people, again, kind of... But last time, everyone kind of just acted very quickly. Folks set up barricades and broke in. This time, people set up barricades, and there were the same, you know, uh, what did you see? We didn't see shit chance, but there was not the kind of um, there was not the kind of uh, collective sort of will to action. Hey, John, how you doing, buddy? Fun night. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's lovely. Of all the nights to have a police mi riot line, makes a bunch of nice people. Oh, they did it! Oh, they almost did it, Elaine. Elaine. The Portland Sheriff uh, and the former police chief is a guy named Mike Reese. And one of my colleagues has really appreciated an old protest chant from Portland, from Portland to Greece. Fuck Mike Reese. Um, and tonight, there's a, there's, there's a slightly different version of it. Oh. This, is the, this is the original. Yeah, yeah this is the original. But it, it, it does improve my hopes that you might get your wish. Oh. <laughs> This is John. That fil I'm filming John as he takes a picture of me in front of the thing. This is my friend John. Yeah, that's nice. Achilles is. So, this is a funny story I'll tell people while we wait for the cops. So, that's my buddy John. John was a cardiologist for decades before he decided to retire and become a photojournalist and travel the world. He's cool as shit. Um, he, his life. 
10 and more when he started with a, um, a fellow who, uh, I, I got to be really careful about this, was an individual who lives in LA. Um, and the two of them met while covering the refugee crisis in, I think, like 2014 or something. Um, and then years later, like last year, when Jake Hanrahan and I are in northeast Syria, um, we're hanging out in a hotel, and I run into this guy. Um, and I'd never met him before, and I didn't know he knew John. But, like, he and I become friends, and we start having beers, and we're, like, drinking on the top of this building, watching the sunset. And I mention friend John in Portland, and he's like... Mention gives John's full name, and I'm like, "Wait, how do you know John?" It turns out they were buddies for forever, and so anyway, that was a fun little connection to make in northeast Syria, thousands of miles away. From who, who was his friend? Uh huh. Sometimes that kind of stuff happens. We're just in the waiting period here. Not John the Lefty, John Rudolph. Uh, my shoes are Y3s. Yeah. Well, I will take photos or video of something else once the, uh, the police actually show up and start doing it. Until then, We'll avoid filming people's faces and stuff. There's not much to film, to be honest. It's a bunch of people checking their phones, getting their shields ready, and waiting for the to hit people. They're, they're either going to come, yeah, they're either going to drive through the fence here, or they either going to come in through this side, or they're just going to rush to this way. Yeah, that would be interesting. No, that's kind of the problem of the location and why maybe a wise thing to do would be to leave since folks didn't seem to take any action against the building. But now people are committed to the whole thing. A lot of the same crowd, but also like there's some. So one of the things that was different about tonight is we had, you know, this, this similar crowd has gone out and done actions in this kind of part of town, away from the normal big justice center actions, or well, they're not big anymore, and they're increasingly messy. But away from the justice center for the last couple of nights, and it's mostly been kind of the um, the spicy crew, we'll call them, right? Like the folks that of parkour, um, that sort of set. Um, and who are like kind of very direct action oriented. That's the best way to describe them, right? The people who um who are are more in the direct action side of things. Attachment from Wall of Moms, um, and a uh, uh, a local uh, activist named Dimitri, who was one of the um one of the young women of color who was uh, assaulted uh, by Jeremy Christian in the attack that. To claim the lives of the two men who uh, rose to uh, her defense in the defense of, of the other person who was with her, um, and she's she's was it was here tonight as well, kind of with the Wall of Moms folks, um, which is interesting. We haven't really had. I think this is the first time we've really had Wall of Moms, you know, sorts kind of make an organized appearance alongside the group that are the north side of town. Um, and one of the things that what's happened tonight is interesting is that like you did kind of see this conflict between the people who, you know, are are kind of increasingly down for uh, actions, but also not super comfortable with damaging property, um, you know, and the crowd that is very comfortable with that um, and kind of is is particularly motivated. To do that. Uh, so that's 
interesting. Um, and is kind of one of the things that's uh, sort of unique about the evening so far. And we'll see what else comes from it. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like make any pronouncements about peace policing and the like, especially on a live stream, um, especially since there's differing opinions on that sort of thing. I will talk about what I saw, which was uh, a, a pretty sizable chunk of the crowd who seemed to want to do damage to the building and a smaller chunk of the crowd who wanted to prevent that. Um, and it We'll get you a shot, a distant shot. You can see here in the right, lower right-hand corner, that's the Union Building. It is uh, it's very much intact. People aren't really doing anything to it. So they gave up, at least for the time being, on whatever sort of action people were taking on the building. Um, and I don't know if that's more to do. It might have more to do with the fact that some people in the neighborhood came out a little bit ago um, and asked people not to fuck with the building too much. Um, and people who live like literally, I don't know. I don't know. Everyone's just kind of milling around. Uh, I kind of expected the police to be out here now, which is why I started the live stream. But now, now they're not. So, that's the situation. All right, folks. So, I don't know. I think I might hang up for a little while because who knows? Who knows how long it will be? Um, I don't know. They could come out any second, um, which is why I'm hesitant to do the hang up. But I'm just looking right now, like at the moment, basically all I'm doing is standing and watching a lone L rat at the end of the street. Well, I just showed you, you know, the um, the union building, a crowd kind of hangs out around it and no, no direct action is, is currently being taken. Um, so folks, at least for the time being, are not attempting to do any damage to it. So here's the L rad right at the end of the street there. And um, that's the situation. I don't know. It's one of those things where a conspiratorial minded person might be. Wouldn't be supportive of the direct action side of things. Um, and, and maybe that's why they're kind of holding back and waiting. Um, or maybe their hope was that people would really fuck up this building and it would piss up people. So uh, it, as much as I might want to like run through the different things that are possibilities in my head at the moment, I also don't like the idea of just like kind of contributing to random speculation about what might happen out here. So I think I uh, leave you all for the time being and wait until the police come out in force to, uh, to come back. Unless they don't come out, in which case I'll probably just let you all know on Twitter when I go home.